States of matter. We are familiar with the basic three states of matter, which are solids, liquids, and gases. And then there's the lesser known one, plasma, and the man-made one, Bose-Einstein condensate. But apparently, there are more states of matter beyond that. There are over 20 different states of matter. And one of them took my interest. Especially since it was the first one I saw on the list and I went for it. This matter I'm talking about is... Degenerate matter. Not to be confused with the other term. What's so cool about degenerate matter? You can find them in space! Degenerate matter is a highly dense state of fermionic matter, which Pauli exclusion principle exerts thermal pressure. Pause for a moment. Real quick. Fermions are particles that follow Fermi-Dirac statistics. They generally have half-odd integer spins that include quarks, composite particles, baryons, atoms, and nuclei. And they are different from bosons, which obeys the Bose-Einstein statistics. Fermions, however, obeys the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that two identical fermions cannot occupy the same quantum state within a quantum system, formulated by some Australian physicist in 1925. Anyways, this applies to matter that have electrons, protons, neutrons, and other fermions. It's mainly used in astrophysics to refer to dense stellar objects where the, where the pressure of gravitation is ridiculously strong. Degenerate matter is naturally found in stars in their evolutionary stages, such as white dwarfs and neutron stars. This is where we find degenerate gas, which produces when gas becomes super compressed and particles bump right up against each other. Despite being a gas, it behaves more like a solid. The difference between normal gas and degenerate gas is that normal gas exerts higher pressure when it is heated and most of the energy levels are unfilled and the particles are free to move around. But for degenerate gas, the pressure does not depend on the temperature and all of the lower energy levels are filled, which again, high density. Because of these full energy levels, they strongly resist compression. The only way they can move is to absorb enough energy to get to the upper energy shells. This is a lot of energy we're talking about, considering that compressing a degenerate gas requires a change in the motions of the degenerate particle. Degenerate particles have no room, so they're all compact and dense. Hence why I mentioned that it sort of behaves like a solid. Now that I think about it, degenerate matter and degenerate gas are their own different things from the standard states of matter. I have looked around and from what I have seen, there is no such thing as degenerate liquid or degenerate solid. I feel like there is an argument out there with people proving that only gas exists within degenerate matter, while some others are proving that liquids and solids exist within degenerate matter. There probably is, but as I'm doing this vid voice recording right now, I don't have a lot of time left to continue researching on this. So this is what we have. You can find it. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Degenerate matter... Oh, wait, I lost... I lost. <laughs> Composite particles, baryons... <laughs> wait, did I even pronounce that right? <laughs> the pressure does not depend on the pressure. I just... I just messed up. <laughs> this... <laughs> the energy levels are unfilled, and the particles are free to move around. Someone just get in their car. <laughs> The only way they can move is to absorb enough energy to get to the upper energy. <laughs>